Between the 14th and 17th centuries, Europe was plagued by a series of dancing epidemics. In each incident, a few people would begin dancing, then a few turned into a few more, and soon, entire villages were consumed by a desperate urge to dance. The dancing was seemingly without cause and without end. The dancers would gyrate and sway until they finally collapsed from exhaustion. During one outbreak, hundreds of people began to dance across a bridge over the Moselle River near Maastricht in the Netherlands. The bridge gave way under all of that weight, and as many as 200 people drowned to death. 1374 saw huge clusters of dancing mania occurring in Germany, France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Dancers were said to have experienced hallucinations and religious revelations. But to truly understand the dancing madness, it is necessary to examine the 1518 case, which is by far the best documented outbreak. It began in July 1518 in Strasbourg, which at the time was a part of the Holy Roman Empire. Frau Trophia stepped into the street and began to dance. She danced despite the pleas from her husband to stop. This went on all day and well into the night before she finally collapsed for a few hours of sleep. The next day, she woke up and immediately resumed her dancing. The dancing went on for days. Her limbs ached and her feet bled, but Frau Trophia could not stop. As the days passed, a crowd gathered, watching her. After four to six days of constant dancing, she was whisked away to the shrine of St. Vitus for healing. It was too late, however. Others picked up where she had left off, and within a month, there were 400 people whirling and flailing in the streets. Taking the advice of doctors, leaders decided the best course of action was to keep the citizens dancing. They hired musicians and constructed dance floors, all in the hopes that the impulse would pass. It didn't pass, though. It only got worse. The dancers were invigorated by the pounding drums and jingling tambourines. On and on they danced as if in a trance. The dancing lasted all through the summer and into the beginning of fall. During those months, it is estimated that 15 people a day were dying from heart attacks, stroke, and exhaustion. When medicine failed, authorities turned to religion. Theologians called for a total stop of all dancing. In fact, they banned dancing of any kind, with the exception of weddings. Those most affected by the illness were taken to a shrine on a mountain to perform religious rites. The afflicted were made to wear red shoes upon their feet and stand beneath a carving of St. Vitus, the patron saint of dancing. This seemed to do the trick, and gradually, the dancers recovered. So what caused this bizarre outbreak in the first place? Records from the past offer insight into the theories of the time. Those of faith believed the dancers had been cursed by an angry Saint Vitus, hence all of the emergency trips to the shrine. Others wondered if they could be demonically possessed, or part of some heretical dance cult. Astrologists believed the sick had fallen prey to a change in cosmic alignment, while medical experts placed the blame on an excess of hot blood. Typically, the treatment for this condition was bleeding, but in this particular case, doctors felt the constant dancing would suffice. Renowned physician and alchemist Paracelsus proposed that the dancing mania was the result of sexual repression. Going back to patient zero, Frau Trophia, Apparently, her husband despised it when she danced. This information, paired with the fact that the dancers were predominantly women, led him to think that the dancing was a way for unsatisfied wives to rebel. All of these theories fall short by modern standards. A more contemporary view is that the dancers were suffering from ergotism, a condition that comes from consuming ergot-infected rye. Ergotism is also called St. Anthony's Fire, and it causes convulsions, vomiting, diarrhea, gangrene, mania, and psychosis. Ergotism has also been cited as an explanation for the Salem witch trials, and LSD is a synthetic that was originally derived from ergot. This theory may seem more plausible than the others, but it is still unlikely. John Waller, who has written two books on the topic, has completely rejected ergot as the cause. For one thing, ergotism often causes restricted blood flow that can result in the loss of limbs. 
So how would the dancers have been able to dance for such extended periods of time? Something else to consider is that all of the incidents of the dancing plague were scattered in areas with vastly different crops and weather. Instead, Waller believes the most practical explanation is that the dancers were victims of mass hysteria or mass psychogenic illness. To truly grasp the levels of psychological stress these people were under, one must look at the circumstances of the times. They were faced with the threat of poverty, syphilis, starvation, and paralyzing fears brought on by superstition and religion. All cases of mass hysteria are preempted by major societal anxiety. This strain is so great that when one person exhibits bizarre behavior, a ripple effect is created, and the behavior spreads like wildfire. As of right now, Waller's interpretation of events seems to be the most credible and widely accepted. Perhaps it is really just as simple and as complicated as that. During that long summer, the residents of Strasbourg lost their marbles and danced out of an all-consuming existential dread. I'll leave you with this account written in 1636. In the year 1518 AD, there occurred among men a remarkable and terrible disease called St. Vitus Dance, in which men in their madness began to dance day and night until finally they fell down unconscious and succumbed to death. That's going to be all for today's video. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to hear more about weird and morbid history. I'm Lola Tarantula, and as always, thank you so much for watching.